I can just start whenever. Okay. I'm Robert Rimmer. I'm 19. I'm from Jacksonville, Florida, and right now I'm a dance major at Jacksonville University. With passion and dance, I feel like it's what you put behind your movement and what you put behind what you're trying to get across to people. Sometimes passion doesn't Sometimes passion doesn't translate well to other people because they don't exactly understand what your passion is or what you're going through at the time. So as long as you know you have that passion, then yeah, I think you're good. I don't know. <laughs> Um, my name is. I took this camera. Can you talk to me the camera? Okay. Uh, my my name is Mauricio Mejia. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Mexico, San Luis Potosí. Uh, I I think yeah. Make sure yeah. Uh, Tom, you're on it when she when the lady goes around and saying you're on it here, right? Uh, you want to say more out? No, just uh, on it. The 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 guy can be on it, and the girl can go around. Okay. All right, let's go on from the, the print section. Well, when I started doing dance in general, I was about 12 or 13 years old. Well, I was 13 when I started doing ballet, but it wasn't anything serious. Uh, and I was doing other dances at the moment, uh, like contemporary dance, hip hop, a little bit of jazz also. Um, and 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 ballet, but like I realized that ballet was not that I was good at the other ones, but I realized that ballet was really the one that I couldn't do at all, and I was like, I really need to, you know, learn how to do this. So I talked to a teacher in in my uh, that now and then would come to my old studio back in San Luis, um, and he would like coach me some stuff and he told me you're never gonna grow here like if you wanna actually learn how this is done you're gonna have to, to leave to another school to take it more serious so I was around 14 years old when I moved from my city to like kind of across the country in Mexico uh, and I started living alone uh, to like pursue dancing and I was I was there for like about two years dancing from morning to night, literally, like almost 12 hours of dancing. I think you gotta have a certain ego to dance um, because, you know, you're very exposed in, on stage. Uh, it's really easy to get in your head and let that kind of ego grow. 
which in a way is very good to have because it's a very competitive uh, world, the event world. But you know, try to maintain yourself. Remember there's a floor down there. really upset about a lot of things after a rehearsal and he said that in dance you gotta be 80% strong emotionally 20% strong physically so so can you describe to us some of the biggest sacrifices you've made or dance? My family. Yeah, my, my country, my people. Uh, friends. I mean, pretty much everything I knew before dance. I, I had to leave it to a very unknown <laughs> world. Do you miss it at all? Of course, every day. Um, but, I mean, it's always been. Uh, I've also always known that it's, it's giving me so much and of course it's hard, you know. I'm so grateful I have the support of my family and, and, and my friends, um, but of, also it's a, a little struggle, uh, you know, being away from home and it's been a while. Were they supportive at first when you first went to school? Yeah, yeah, they were, surprisingly. I, I mean, I didn't know. I'm so grateful for my parents for that. But my, my brother was the first one into uh, going for arts because he's, as I say, he's a musician. Um, so he was the one who found out a little bit more rough when he told my mom he wanted to, you know, play guitar and around the world. <laughs> of course, uh, she was like, uh, just because it's a little more. In some places, I would say, but in my city, it's a little bit more close-minded. So, of course, people that want to go into that world and dive into it, it's a little bit more unknown, I would say. Um, so, I think for my brother, it was a little bit harder to, you know, make my mom realize how also important to give to the artists. And he kind of opened me that path so I could you know, pursue whatever I wanted to do in life, and yeah.
I'm, my name is Marco Takendon. I am 24 years old. I am from the Philippines and I moved to Jacksonville in 2009. And I like to dance. I love to dance. Yeah, I'm home. Uh, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, two. Ah! Come on, five, six. And then go seven, eight, five, one, two, three, three four, five, six, seven, I was not anywhere close to my home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, where's your home? I'm pretty close. Yeah, grab you from here and then you're going to come up. So that's the end. felt like there were times where I didn't belong in a certain space. So dance really helped me kind of cope with that. And it was my safe space, my comfort zone. Uh, that's how I expressed myself. That's how I felt good about myself. And whenever something went bad, I would just go in the room or find a studio and just dance it out because uh, it feels free. To Five, six, seven, you, so you, so you, hey, 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 click, boom, boom, line, hit it. Like some of my Filipino or family friends, they always judge that I'm doing like a dance major. Like I'm not, why am I not a nurse or why am I not a doctor? But things like that, I don't need to worry about. I try to steer away from the mirror now these days because uh, the feeling's more important.
I think it was hard on my family to kind of see me because my parents were both engineers. So they envisioned, they definitely envisioned a more normal kind of growing up, like regular high school, go to college, like get a job, like the normal, the more normal path in life. But um, because I wanted to be a ballet dancer, that came with a lot of different things and sacrifices. So that means doing online school, not really having a normal like high school social life. Um, and I think that was hard for them to see. never when I've been dancing, even when I was literally on the verge of eating disorders. And I look back now and I'm like, oh my gosh, your legs were so skinny. But um, at some point I'm just like, who cares? Like I can jump really, I can jump high because I have strong legs. I, yeah. And at some point it's just like, it's not worth it. Like at some, I think at one point in my life, I like wouldn't go on bike rides because I didn't want my legs to get like too big, which is so stupid because bike riding is fun. So why would I ever do that to myself?
hard to just to see yourself and you just ballet you have to be perfect like we're striving for, for perfection and when you look at yourself in the mirror and you don't see something perfect it's really hard to understand why you can't be perfect even if you do all this stuff like these crazy diets even if you're literally not eating and you're just you're doing everything all day like six days or six hours a week six days a week you still look in the mirror and you're like this isn't enough which is depressing which is sad because we work so hard for everything that we're doing but we're always trying to get more and more out of our bodies Until